Good morning. As you can see from my background, I'm no longer in Catula, Texas, uh, enjoying uh, the great uh, gate guarding uh, services that we provide. Uh, we decided to shoot up to Connecticut to visit family and friends over the Easter uh, holidays, which was yesterday, and we had great friends, great times, great food. And as you can see from the water and the green behind me, it's a world of a difference as far as uh, environment. It is a little windy today. Hopefully it's, I'll be able to over talk the wind. It is a little natty today, so if I do the Australian wave, it's to move a gnat along. Uh, the purpose of this video is to tell you how we did, how, how well we made, how much money did we make, was it worth it? Uh, from a perspective of uh, experiences, it was an experience. Uh, we left Seattle uh, end of December, as you saw from my other videos. Shot down to El Paso, spent a week in El Paso getting our uh, license. Uh, I'm going to look at papers every now and then to make sure I get the numbers right. But we tied up with somebody, uh, James Jenkins at Guard One, who was very helpful in as far as getting us through the permission cycle and getting our license. And upon completion, which took about seven days, he then assigned us to go down to Monahan's, uh, which I was on another one of my videos where we started our 24-7 gate guarding. Now, how do we do? What's the bottom line? Well, when we showed up at Monaghan's, we were immediately put to work. We went to uh, uh, a road construction that was lasted, I think, six and a half days. So it was six 24-hour days plus a 12-hour day. And uh, that was finished. We quickly moved on uh, and back to the corral. I'm gonna call it the corral. That's the campground where they pay uh, for your site. They have a limited amount of spaces, so we were able to get back into the corral and we spent seven days hanging around the corral for our next job. Our next job again, you saw from one of my videos, was guarding a, uh, a bridge. It was a five ton bridge and as you know, most of these sand trucks are massively heavier than five tons. So our job was to make sure that none of these trucks collapsed the bridge. That lasted about 19 days and uh, then that one quickly ended and we were sent back to the corral. Unfortunately, uh, the corral was full, so they shipped us over to the state park, which was very nice, but we weren't earning any money. After spending about seven days in the state park, uh, we still hadn't moved over to available sites in the corral, which means the people in the corral didn't get positions out on the, uh, in the oil rig industry, so we're getting kind of nervous. We weren't earning any money, and we to be honest, we were sitting in the middle of Monaghan's with nothing to do. So we got a call from uh, James who said that, uh, gee, down Catula, uh, they were short 21 people, but this would be a guard shack position. You actually work for Guard One Services. You're paid an hourly wait of 1250, but there was a lot of overtime. So we should consider it. So after looking at our options up at uh, Monahan's, we immediately got into uh, our, our van, hooked it up and shot down in two days. And we're in Catula where we were put immediately to work. Uh, we went to a, uh, uh, a guard shack. We were working four days on, four days off, but the first few weeks we were working basically six days on, two days off, making uh, decent money. The money that you make is in the overtime. It's not in the standard time, so we were doing some decent money, and then it got a little slow. They finally hired enough people where our overtime went away. So for three weeks, we actually just earned uh, 36 hours pay each. Uh, and by the time we take out our $450 a month for site fees and the site was 30 miles away from where our campground was so we had $15 a day in gas uh, it dropped down rather quickly uh, to marginally was it worth it but then the overtime came back again so here's the bottom line when we were up at uh, the Monahans area and again Carlsbad area uh, we worked for a total of 37 days. Our income totaled out to $123 per day. We didn't, we're not subtracting food like some do because we were going to eat anyways. Uh, and there was no gas uh, because we were right at the camper. So it worked out to about $123 a day. Uh, when we moved down to Catula, and again, we're adding our gas in and we're adding our site fees in, we were down there for 54 days. In those 54 days, we subtracted 810 for gas and we subtracted 900 for rent. And it came out to about $193 a day. 
So we made far better money down in uh, Catula area. There was a lot of driving, there was no doubt on our overtime days. It was easily 60, 70 miles each way to our overtime. So your 12 hour days easily became 14 by the time you drove back and forth. Uh, but on the opposite, we I did enjoy some of our days off going out to uh, the Alamo, going out to some of the missions, going out to the Riverwalk, uh, San Antonio area. So you have to weigh each. Uh, what's important? If you actually want to just go someplace to sit, well, the gate guarding was the better deal if you could get a long-term assignment. Now, on all the websites, Mary gets involved and, and talks to a lot of people in this type of uh, job opportunities. And we find that if you get down there in October, November, December, you have a good chance of getting a long-term assignment. If you get down there in January, February, you're now filling in for people, you're replacing people that have decided to terminate their, uh, their employment uh, for reasons, maybe health, maybe medical, maybe just to move on to the next job. So all in all, uh, I did prefer the uh, 12 on, 12 off. Money wasn't our highest priority at this point. Also, seeing the area was important. Uh, so I'm gonna go with that. Uh, one thing you should know though is uh, when it gets into the whole what's happening down there, uh, some guard checks are easier than others. Mary was on one that was there for, uh, she was there for two days, only saw three trucks a day. I was on one that saw about 20 a day. The last one we were on where they were doing five wells, we were easily doing three or four hundred a day. So there's a lot of different variations in physical demand for these jobs. So I'll go quickly over what is actually, what's happening out there on these particular sites. Well, the first thing is, is the first, the, the last job we were on, we were at a shack that was only having oil removed. If you see the machines going up and down, up and down, up and down, usually they don't pump directly into a pipeline, they pump into standoff tanks, and these tanks have to be emptied pretty much on a daily basis. So what'll happen in the morning is uh, a rep from BP, yeah, British Petroleum, owns most of the wells down there. We'll drive on property, see how many tanker trucks he needs that particular day, then he'll go off and leave, and three or four tanker trucks will come in and empty that day's oil. That's cr pretty easy. You're not gonna get more than 10 or 15 or 20 trucks a day, bring a good book. Uh, we didn't get those sites. Uh, after getting there for a day or two, we found out, well, they were gonna drill five wells, not three, not four, but five. Now what happens when they drill the wells is the well goes down about three miles, maybe two miles, 12, 1400 feet, I guess two to three miles, then curls out and runs parallel about the 20 to 22,000 foot level. And it might go for two or three miles uh, on that particular level. When they do five, they're going down five right next to each other, but they're going in different quadrants of a compass. So that being said, first thing that starts coming in is these huge earth moving equipment, uh, extra wide loads, and what they're gonna do is prep the site. When they get on the site, trucks will start coming carrying caliche, mix, every type of stratus to create a flat pad for the oil rig and for all its uh, supporting trucks and equipment, housing, uh, office buildings, so on and so forth, a quite large pad. So for three or four days after the uh, big earth movers come in, you're gonna get truck after truck after truck, maybe 50, 75 trucks a day of material to create the pad. Then the trucks start coming. Next thing you know, these uh, big earth movers disappear. They, they send head out. Next people to come is, in our case, was Hal Burton. Uh, you wake up, you get in there at six in the morning, come daylight seven, you see 200 trucks, I'm talking semis, with massive amount of equipment as far as you can see down the road, all lined up. They come together. And for four or five hours, you're just checking them in and I, you saw that procedure on one of my other videos. Hours and hours and hours checking them in. And then many of them stay, uh, like the buildings, the offices, uh, the housing, uh, some of the uh, parts of the oil rig itself are built on flatbeds that stay part of, uh, they stay on property, but in general result, 80% of them now have to leave. So over the next day or two, uh, you're gonna get the workers coming in to help put it up, the workers leaving, and these empty flatbeds leaving. Uh, that's good, so for about two or three days, you're getting hundreds of trucks in and out, all supporting equipment. 
then after that they start drilling. So drilling, all you're going to get is uh, workers in, workers out. Every 7 to 14 days the whole system changes. You get a whole new series of workers in, a whole new series leaving. But unfortunately you're going to get about 40 salespeople a day. Everybody wants to sell these guys something. Our particular gate we had to open every time and close every time. Some of them you're lucky, they stay open. Ours was not. So for two to three hundred times we had to go out there, open the gate, let them in, close the gate, latch it up, go back in the building. So it was quite tedious. Drilling went on I think four to five, for a long period of time. I think uh, four to five weeks. Then all of a sudden one day all these trucks show up again and off they start hauling all this equipment. So for two days you're getting several hundred trucks in and out, in and out, in and out. Uh, excuse me a second. I have a spider going up and down my screen. Uh, in and out, in and out, and uh, quite busy again. Uh, then all of a sudden for a week it was quiet. Not a soul. I mean, one truck, two truck, three truck. Then we get the notice the frackers are coming. Ooh, talk about trucks. All the fracking equipment comes. Massive trucks come in with all the equipment for it. And what they're doing is they're going to go down and clean out the holes, what they do first from all the residue, and then they're going to pack it with sand. And uh, once the frackers come in, uh, just, just literally 40, 60 employees on each shift coming and going, uh, you're getting the uh, sand trucks, 80, 100 sand trucks a day in and out. They fill it with sand. And being the fact that we had five wells going, it was going to take six weeks of um, fracking and sanding going on. We left after about the first week, thank God, because that was a lot of sand trucks. When the frackers finish, they're going to pack up and move on, and the last people are the production people. They come in, they put the final well cap in, they put the tanks in that's going to store the oil, and so on and so forth. So it's quite, quite an investment, quite a big project going on. So long story short, uh, we went over what's going to happen, uh, the type of trucks. If I had to look back and reflect on what I would like, I'd like a gate that you didn't have to open and close like some of them don't. You only have to take pictures of them coming and going. Uh, three or four hundred times a day opening that ten foot, ten foot gate, closing it again is quite strenuous. Uh, I did like the uh, 12 on 12 off because it gave us an opportunity to go visit places in the area and go see things where unfortunately at 24 7 I feel too married to a, a project, uh, almost like constricted, you're there and you're, you're stuck. Uh, but that's just personal. You'll have to find out what's the best for you. Like we said, there's three different types of opportunities. The first is you go out with the, uh, the pipeline, and as they build the underground pipelines, you, you stay out. You go out every morning, you come back, but you're riding miles and miles of dirt roads that are not on main highways. Second is a 24-7 where you're, you're actually guarding one particular well or one particular roadway. And the third is the gate guards where you actually go from shack to shack. Uh, in our particular, like I said, well, at the beginning it was only maintenance. They were only coming in and out several times a day to remove it. Then they went to full production. When that's done, it's going to shut back down to a 12-hour gate again, and it's only going to be the oil trucks coming in and out to empty the tanks. So you got to pick what's best for you, what money's best for you, and, uh, and uh, it was a good gig. Might do it again. Uh, I can't turn down the money. That uh, gives us enough gas money to get around for the next six months. Uh, fixes some things on my trailer and my car that happened to break. So I have no regrets. I would do it again. But I think you need to be particular to what you want to marry yourself to for 30, 60, 90 days. And this, how strenuous it can be if you're on the wrong gate. Uh, this is used for outdoor staycations. I hope you learned something off our experiences. Uh, Remember to ring the bell and like it and uh, get me to 100 videos, so 100 uh, subscriptions so I can finally get my own channel. Uh, safe journeys and uh, happy Easter.